I've got a few tips here about keyframing in Final Cut Pro. Let me get this lined up. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm also introducing this uh, filter or effect that I'm going to have coming out in the next couple of days. So I have this clip and I've applied this filter, glass shelf, to it. And glass shelf has all of these parameters to deal with. When I started out, it was just a few, you know, just positioning and things. Like, um, here's the first step. If you need to call up the on-screen controls, just click on this bar right here, and it'll activate them. And this is how it started out. I could move things around on the screen a little bit, and there's a floor and a back wall that have reflections. And as I started going through and figuring out all the other stuff I needed, all of this ended up being added to it to, you know, give you really good control over what the effect that you need. So you've got all of these things. And so my first tip about keyframing in Final Cut is keyframe the last part first. And in to keep from having to figure out all of the parameters that you want to keyframe, the easiest thing to do is keyframe everything. And I'm not talking about clicking down this whole line. You just go to this drop down menu right here and add keyframe. And everything is keyframed for you. I start backing up. Now, the last part of this, I want the picture to be lined up and move in to fill the frame. So I have two different ways of doing that. I could change the camera distance or I could change the view angle. No, I'm, but it really doesn't matter. I've moved the time, I've moved the playhead to a new position and before I do anything, I need to add another keyframe. For this example, I'm just gonna move back here and add this keyframe. And then I'm going to send the camera out like that so that as this plays in, it just comes into view. Now, I did that first to show you that if you move anything, after you start keyframing, if you move anything in between, uh, let's just say you want to try a different view, then when you keyframe this, I mean, when you play through this, you have whacked your keyframes. So once you start keyframing, don't change anything unless it's on a keyframe. So what I'm going to do is just reset this whole thing. Hitting this little back arrow will clear all the keyframes from your clip. And I'll go ahead and add the last keyframe. I'm going to move it back a little bit. And I'm going to change the lens view out a little bit. I'm going to keyframe that. I'm going to move it back a little bit further than that because I want it to pause before it moves. Maybe a little better than that. Add another keyframe. I'm going to move back here. I'm going to make another keyframe. And I'm going to start changing this around. So I'm going to find the view that I want at this position. Uh, let's go a little further out. Now, everything I do while I'm doing this is part of the keyframes, since I've keyframed everything except for drop-down menus and checkboxes. Okay, anything that's got this yellow marker will be keyframed or can be keyframed. And I'll move this forward a little bit. I want to move this out here a little bit. Okay, I'll move it back here. Make another keyframe. 
This is just a very simple example. And then I'm going to want to move this off. And I just drag that off the screen. All right. And now I have my keyframe. So what's going to happen is mm -hmm. it's just going to come in, rotate around, hit its mark, and then fill the... I've already lost my last keyframe. Oh, let's see. Um, camera distance. This needs to be 42.5. That should do it. So let's play through this. Bam. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Go back to. Now, it really doesn't matter where you set up your keyframes in the beginning because afterwards, with the clip selected, you can type Control V and activate your video animations palette. I'm going to zoom in on the clip a little bit so we can see this a little better. And then you can click on this drop down and select all. And now I have all of the major keyframe markers. So let's just say I want to have the move into the final position a little slower. I can click on these. I can slide this over. And click on this and I'll slide this over. And it'll wait. And so we we'll go through It'll move into this position much faster, stay paused for longer, and then move in slower. Okay, and once this finishes rendering, this will be much smoother. So, hit Control V again to hide the animation. Just let this finish rendering real quick. Now, since there's a lot of reflections in this effect, depending on how many reflections you set up, uh, rendering can take quite a while for some of this. Right now it's just the back wall and the floor. But I'll go through that in the next video where I go through all the details of this effect. So now, just play through this. Comes in. Okay, so to recap, keyframe the last frame, this effect is set up so that it starts out at what should be the last frame and then you can keyframe everything, every action before that. That's a fairly good tip for speeding up keyframing is to work backwards. Hope this helps and thanks for listening. And watch out for the glass shelf effect coming out within the next couple of days or so.